Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Maya and this is Inspired by Maya. So in today's video, I'm going to be making some parachute pants. I have been working on these for over a month now, just sampling and trying to get the right fit because it's easy to go too oversized and then also make it too slim so i just wanted to get it just right and i feel like i've achieved that now so i'm ready to get started also i was really indecisive about which fabric to use because i wanted something with structure but also a nice kind of drape but not too soft of a drape because these are supposed to look i don't know hard like they're supposed to look I don't know, they need, they need some structure to it basically. But yeah, I've got the right fabric now. Which is this, um, which is this, I'm gonna say I think it's nylon because it's quite strong. It's a woven fabric, so there's no stretch to it, but that's perfectly fine because these pants are super oversized. Um, but yeah, they're really comfortable as well. When I was making the samples, I literally ended up staying in them like I didn't come out of it because I forgot they were on like they were that comfortable and that's exactly what I'm striving for in all my pants now I'm kind of swaying away from slim fit just because I don't find it as comfortable um but I do still like it but oversized pants and a small top is just what I love so yeah I've got this dark beige nylon fabric I think and it has a nice kind of structure to it it has a bit of a I think it will have a nice drape and um, structure because we're going to be adding pleats around the knees but you'll see all of that in the design that I've created. The pattern will be available on my Etsy page from a UK size 4 to size 18 so yeah if you want to download that the link will be in the description box down below but without further ado let's get into the tutorial and if you like it please like comment and subscribe yeah <laughs> So first I started off by drafting my design as usual. I decided to do an elasticated waistband. There won't be any toggles on the sides but that's something that you can easily add on if you want to. I also decided to add zip pockets onto the back of the pan. Originally I was going to do it on one side but I ended up doing it on both. And then of course these wouldn't be modern day parachute pants if they didn't have the pleats at the knees. After many edits to this pattern, I was finally happy with the fit, so I assembled my PDF pattern. The link's in the description if you'd like to get it. Then I cut my fabric out. I used a water-soluble marker to trace the pieces and then cut them out. Don't forget to mark the pocket and pleat notches. I didn't realise that the fabric was slightly waterproof, but that would make sense because I thought it was nylon. But anyways, my markings wiped right off, so I had to use white chalk for them to stay. These are the pattern pieces that you should have. Two front pant legs, two back legs, two zipper pocket bags, and four side pocket bags. The first thing I sewed was the pleats on the front of the pants. You want to fold from the bottom of the pant upwards, match the notches together, pin it in place and sew a short straight stitch on top to keep it in place. I actually ended up adding a third pleat because I thought it looked a lot better. This has been changed on the PDF pattern already. Once that was done, I moved on to the zipper pockets, which I would say is the trickiest bit in the whole of this pant assembly, but overall construction is quite easy so don't be scared. So you want to take the zipper pocket piece and place it right sides facing the back pant leg, match the rectangle with the one on the pant. To do this, I poked a pin through each corner so that the pant and pocket are matched up and make sure that it's secure with a few more pins. Do that for both pant leg pieces, then we can move to the sewing machine. I shortened my stitch length for this bit because because you want to be really accurate with your sewing for this to come out good. You want to sew on the lines of the rectangle, pivoting at each corner and making sure that the stitch lines are straight and match back up perfectly when you're closing the stitch. And don't forget to back stitch. Once that's done, snip the centre of the rectangle and cut through the middle until you're about one centimetre before the end. Then snip a V shape and get right into the corners. This is very important because it determines how flat our pocket will lie when we turn it out. So try and get as close as you can without snipping the stitches. Then pull the pocket through to the back side of the pants. Iron the seams flat and it should look like this. 
Now take your zipper and do a tack on the end to keep it together. Then pin your zip to the pocket. My zip was slightly chunkier and a little bit longer than I wanted. The pockets are 16 centimeters long and I ordered a 16 centimeter zip, but I think I'd go for 15 centimeters next time. Also, the color was a bit off, but it was so hard to find a match, so I just had to make do. Anyways, yeah, you wanna pin the zip in as I'm doing in this video and make sure the zipper pulls are at the outside seam of the pant when closed on both pant legs. Now we need to change our foot to a zipper foot so we can get close enough to stitch around the zip. I lengthened my stitch and then did a straight stitch all around the rectangle, pivoting at the corners. Honestly, this part had me so tense. I was scared it wouldn't come out good, but it did and I'm very happy with it. Literally, the sigh of relief I let out after I finished was crazy. Moving on, now we can close the pocket up. So you want to fold the pocket up to the top and pin all around the edges, leaving the folded edge untouched. Then sew with a straight stitch all around and overlock to stop it from fraying. Now it's time to do the fake zipper fly. So you wanna place the front pant pieces on top of each other, right sides facing, then stitch five centimeters in from the extended part of the crotch and follow it through into the one centimeter seam allowance on the crotch. Then fold the fly to the right side and mark your fly shape with chalk. Pin it in place and then stitch all around with a lengthened stitch. Then I did another stitch parallel to that on the inside of the stitch I just made. And that's it for the front of the pant. Next, you wanna overlock each center back pant leg, then sew them together right sides facing with a straight stitch. Now you should have a fully assembled front and back pant piece. So remember when I said the zipper pocket earlier would probably be the most difficult bit? I lied. This bit almost made me stop sewing. The concept is not hard at all, but executing it to a high standard is so difficult. So like I always say, just take your time. I probably should have stopped and eaten something, but I decided to carry on. Anyways, to start, we need to mark where our pocket start and ends. The side of the pocket is 16 centimeters, so I brought a 16 centimeter zipper, but I've changed the pattern so that it's a bit bigger because after sewing it up, I felt it was a bit too small so you want to trace the markings onto all the side seams of your pant pieces then i overlocked each side of the pant individually don't place them together because we need to use the seam allowance to put the pocket in you can overlock the crotch seam as one if you want but i prefer having them separate because it makes it easier to make changes if you need to later now back to the pockets so you want to pin the side seams together leaving the gap for the pocket open and sew with a straight stitch i also sewed my crotch seam here Make sure your seam lines match up. Use the pin method I've shown in my previous videos for accuracy. Now we need to change to our invisible zipper foot. You wanna open up the seam allowance and the zipper and then place the zipper right sides facing down towards the pant. I started on the right side and made sure my zipper teeth were facing inwards towards the opening of the side seam. Then I pinned the zipper so that the stopper is just at the top of the opening and the overhang is a few centimeters above the opening. Then insert the invisible zipper as normal and do the same to the other side of the opening, making sure the zipper matches back up properly. I had to do mine again because I didn't match it up properly the first time. Then do the same for the other side of the pant and test your zippers once you finish sewing to check if they work because sometimes you can sew on the actual zipper when doing an invisible zip and it won't open. Then I changed my foot to a zipper foot and you want to do a small stitch to merge the zipper and side seam stitch to create a seamless transition on the outside and this is what it should look like at this point. Now we can add the pockets on. Here's when I stopped thinking because that last bit took so much out of me but really we should have overlocked our pockets all around. I ended up doing it after and it caused my pockets to not turn out as pretty as I would have liked so make sure you do that. You want to pin the pocket edge right sides facing the zip edge. Use your zipper foot to sew close to the zipper teeth. It should naturally fit into the groove and be easy enough to sew but mid stitch you may need to lift the presser foot to slide the zipper pull out of the way so that you can continue to sew forward. Do that for both sides of the pocket and this is what it should look like. Then the last step is to close the pocket bags, place them right sides facing each other, pin all around and sew with a straight stitch. The beginning and end of this stitch will be a little bit fiddly because it's in an awkward area so it's probably best to position it under the machine, then wind the needle by hand until the presser foot lies flat. And finally the invisible zipper pockets are complete. Now we can start our finishing touches and work on the waistband. Like I said earlier, I should have taken a break because I just wasn't in the mood after that pocket situation, but I still continued so it serves me right. 
I ended up redoing the waistband because I wasn't happy with how it looked. In the footage here, I marked, folded and pinned the hem. Then I sewed up the elastic into one loop and pinned that on top of the hem and sewed it on all in one stitch. Now, I didn't get footage for the way that I ended up doing it, so I'm going to explain it to the best of my ability. I didn't like the result of the first method because it looked puffier than I wanted it and I also made the elastic too big. Also, to measure the elastic, just wrap it around your hips with a little stretch to it. Make sure it sits snug how you'd like the pants to fit at your waist. Then add about a centimeter or two to this. Snip it, overlap the elastic ends, the amount of seam allowance you just added on, and do two zigzag stitches on the raw ends. Now you should have a loop. Now back to the pant. I sewed the hem up with a straight stitch and then pinned the elastic to the hem using the quarter method so the stretch is evenly distributed around the pant. The thing I did differently here was I stitched it fairly close to the top so it'll have a 0.5 centimeter hem at the top of the pant and then I sewed about 0.5 centimeters away from the first pant hem I did at the bottom of the hem to secure the bottom of the elastic in place and I was way more happier with the outcome. Hopefully that makes sense to you and the video helps you visualize it. Now onto the absolute final bit and that's hemming the bottom of the pants. I marked one centimeter with my chalk on the right side of the pants and then pinned it in place and sewed with a straight lengthened stitch and then I was completely done. Originally I was going to do a chunkier hem but because I made the pleat adjustment I couldn't but I actually ended up preferring the smaller hem. So yeah the pants are completely finished now. Assembly is quite easy but it just requires a bit of skill but anyways let's get on to the final reveal. Thank you.